solving systems of equation by substitution. In this video, you'll learn how to recognize that a system can be efficiently solved by substitution if one variable is already isolated or can be easily isolated. You'll also learn that there are multiple ways to perform substitution to solve a system of equations. So let's look at the substitution method. A system of equations can be solved by graphing, but graphing isn't always the best method because it can be hard to see decimal or fraction intersections. If we had a graph like this representing two equations, then we can see the intersection happens right at the point 4, 3, and that would be the solution to our system. But in a graph like this, the intersection is really hard to see because it's in the middle of the grid, so we don't know the exact numbers. So the substitution method allows us to solve that system algebraically by substituting values that are given. Substitution can always be used, but it's the best method when one of the equations already has a variable isolated. So let's look at an example. We'll find the solution to this system of equations using substitution, where x plus 2y equals 8 and x equals negative 5. Our first step is going to be to look for the equation where a variable is already isolated or can be easily isolated. We can see that the bottom equation of x equals negative 5 is already isolated for us, so we'll choose this one. Now that we've chosen the equation that we'll use, we're going to substitute the isolated variable into the other equation. So we're going to take that x equals negative 5 and substitute it into the first equation. So x will become negative 5. So we have negative 5 plus 2y equals 8. So we only have one variable left. Now we can do step 3. This says to solve the other variable in the new equation. So we're going to take our new equation and solve for y. We'll start by adding 5 to both sides. This gives us 2y is equal to 13. Now we'll divide by the coefficient of 2 and get that y equals 6.5. So now we have our solution of x equals negative 5 and y equals 6.5. This system was kind of lucky though because one of our equations was already solved. If our second equation wasn't already solved like x equals negative 5, then we would do step 4 where we substitute the value of our solved variable into the first equation. So let's look at an example when we have to do the fourth step. We'll solve this system where y equals 3x minus 7 and 2x plus y equals 8. Our first step is always to decide what equation has a variable already isolated or can be easily isolated. We see that the first equation has y isolated, and we know that y is equal to 3x minus 7. So now we can substitute the isolated variable into the other equation. So we'll bring down our other equation, and we'll replace y with what it's equal to, which is 3x minus 7. So we have 2x plus 3x minus 7 equals 8. Now we only have one variable in the equation. So we can do step 3, which says to solve for this variable. We'll start by combining like terms. We have 2x's plus 3x's. This will give us 5x minus 7 equals 8. So now we can solve for x. We'll start by adding 7 to both sides of the equation. This gives us 5x is equal to 15. Now we'll divide both sides by the coefficient of 5 and get x is equal to 3. Now we'll have to do our fourth step since we don't have the answer for y yet. So we'll take our first equation and we'll replace x with 3 now that we know that x is equal to 3. So we get y is equal to 3 times 3 minus 7. 3 times 3 can simplify to 9, and 9 minus 7 gives us 2. So now we have our solution at x equals 3 and y equals 2. We'll solve each system using the substitution method again. We'll start with x equals 2y minus 1 and 3x minus y equals 7. We can see that the first equation already has x isolated. So we'll take our second equation and bring it down and replace x with what it's equal to, which is 2y minus 1. So we get 3 times 2y minus 1 minus y equals 7. So we're going to start solving, but we need to simplify this as much as we can first. 
So let's distribute this 3 to the parentheses that includes 2y and minus 1. Distributing gives us 6y minus 3 minus y equals 7. Now we'll combine our like terms of 6y and negative y. This gives us 5y minus 3 equals 7. Now we can start solving for y. We'll start by adding 3 to both sides. This gives us 5y is equal to 10. Now we can divide both sides by the coefficient of 5, which gives us y is equal to 2. So now we have one of our solutions. And we'll find the other solution by replacing y with 2 in our original equation. This gives us 2 times 2 minus 1, or 4 minus 1, which gives us 3. So our solution is x equals 3 and y equals 2. Now let's look at our next system. We can see that our first equation is already isolated again, so we know that y is equal to negative x plus 4. So we'll bring down our other equation and replace y with what it's equal to, which was negative x plus 4. So we get 3x minus the quantity of negative x plus 4 equals 8. So we'll start simplifying so we can solve for x. First, we'll distribute the negative sign to the parentheses. This gives us 3x plus x minus 4 equals 8. We'll combine our like terms of 3x and 1x, which gives us 4x minus 4 equals 8. Now we can start solving. We'll start by adding 4 to both sides. This gives us 4x is equal to 12. Then we'll divide by the coefficient of 4, and that gives us x is equal to 3. So now that we have one of our solutions, We'll replace this into our original equation to find the other solution. So x will become 3. So we'll add negative 3 plus 4, which gives us positive 1. So our solution happens at 3, 1. Let's recap everything that we've learned. We can solve a system using the graphing method, but it's not always easy to see an intersection. When the graphing method won't work, we can use substitution.